Oh, no, we can't take her nowhere. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of My Morning Coffee, where the conversation is always hot, bold, and full of flavor. And you just got through watching hot, bold Gia do her dance in the camera. God, it's always something with you. So listen, we're going to get really quickly into our weekend because I already know what's in her cup. And I definitely knew what was in her cup this weekend, y'all. Let me tell you, Miss Gia, um, she knows how to party. Every time we go somewhere together, I start learning a little bit more about this 30-year law enforcement professional and how she can get all the way out of her comfort zone. So you let the people know what was and what is in your cup today. Oh my goodness. Good morning, y'all. Um, I'm blaming all this on Tanya. Tanya, she be getting on me. So I'll be trying to like, you know, come on here and be, but that's my little song, the little our little intro. I love that little groove and stuff. But look, my knees hurt now. I was up here trying to dance and stuff. <laughs> Not my knees is hurting. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, what's in my cup? This morning, uh, I have coffee in my cup this morning, but over the weekend I had some bomb mimosas, but we'll talk about that a little, a little bit later. But yeah, I got coffee this morning only because, you know, it's it's in the morning and we we're having my morning coffee. So I figured I'll have some coffee. So, yeah, that's what's in my cup. So what have I been up to? Oh, my God, you guys, um, this weekend, I uh, I had a really good weekend. Um, I didn't vent this weekend. I did something. I, th I guess what you would say for me. No, actually, it was for Tanya. Uh <laughs> She invited me out to uh, this uh, event, which I didn't know was happening in, you know, in my city. Well, really not my city, but my city, when I say my city, I mean like Los Angeles or whatever. But um, it was actually in her city. And um, it's the it was the 29th annual holiday home tour. So she invited me to this. And at first I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'll go. I didn't really know what to expect and stuff, you know. So I was like, yeah, you know, Tanya's always always has me out doing something. So uh, but whenever she calls and asks me to do something, you know, I'm with it. I'm with it because that's what I do, because that's what we're about. We're about empowering each other, empower, you know, sisters empowering each other. Hence, um, I'm going to plug the cup again today. See, so I did. We did some empowering this weekend. I was empowered um, by the ladies that were on this um, holiday home tour with us. Had a really good time. Um, it was in Redon. We went to it was some homes. It was only three homes on the tour this year. Um, from my understanding, normally it's more homes, but we went and saw two, three of these homes that were in the Redondo Beach and Manhattan Beach area. And when I tell you guys, these homes were amazing, you guys, oh my God, they were amazing. And little did I know that this was happening really under my nose because Redondo Beach is not that far from where I live. And I grew up here in Los Angeles and, you know, I'm familiar with Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach area, but really I only went there for either to meet Tanya for drinks and food. Um, hang out at her house or, you know, I would go to the, um, we had a, a, a mall called South Bay Galleria, but that was really my extent, you know, and every now and then I would go to the pier. But other than that, I didn't really pay much attention to the residential areas of Redondo Beach, probably because, you know, sister can't afford it. So <laughs> I didn't pay much attention to it, but um, the homes were nice. The ladies, um, we, we, they rented a, uh, like a little, a fancy bus, so a fancy one of those party buses. It was really fancy. It didn't have a pole in it, you guys. So don't start asking, was there a pole on the bus? Cause no, there was no pole. But from what I hear on previous trips, they have had a bus that had a pole. So we ain't gonna get into that right now. Tanya might talk about that a little bit later. So yeah, but um, the tour was really, um, it was amazing. And the people, I met some amazing women from the South Bay area, the Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach area. They all welcomed me on the bus and we had a good time. And it was just, it was a variety of women, all ages. Um, and I tell you, these, look, older women, y'all don't, don't discount us because we know how to party. We know how to get down and stuff. They had, we had uh, libations on the, on the little party bus and we had food, girl. And they, look, they fed us good too. We had all kind of pastries and then we had sandwiches and then we had more mimosas and then we had more mimosas and then we just had a little bubbly and yeah, oh, we had some water along the way too. And that's why she has coffee in her cup. Exactly. Today. Exactly. Okay, that's exactly. Coffee. But um, Tanya will probably chime in on this too. The homes, uh, one house we went into, they call it a smart home, a smart house, whatever. Everything in the house was, I guess, automated and smart and stuff. And it was, it was amazing. And some of the designs and their stuff. I watch a lot of um, 
HGTV and I'm, I'm into the home decorating and decor and interior designing and stuff like that. And to see these houses, they were so, I was like, oh my God, they, they were all beautiful. From the, 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 the shower, they had a steam shower that automatically, if I, I guess it got too steamy, they had some kind of maneuver lever that automatically opened up and let the steam out, the steam out the shower. Just all kind of fancy shit, girl, fancy. Um, and I was like, "Woo! How can I be down? How can I be down?" And then one house, the kid had the kids had their own little like play, uh, little uh, hangout room. Was really nice. Um, you know, had a big ass TV, nice couches. You know, really, really nice. But all the homes, they were very, they were all to me um, very modern uh, as far as the decor and stuff. And they had the Christmas decorations was really nice. Made me want, made me come home and say, I got to get step my game up and get my Christmas stuff going because these uh, the tablescapes were really beautiful. I just wanted to stay. I said, if I lived here, I would probably never go to work, um, and I probably wouldn't be living there then, huh? <laughs> but it was just just being in, being in the home was made made you feel so relaxed and it was just so comforting. And I was just like, wow, you know, it was nice. Um, but yeah, Tanya, what's your take on it? So. First, I want to thank Michelle Brown and Jennifer yes. Goldstein, who has had me out every year. Um, they are amazing business women in South Bay. Listen, they're real estate professionals, but they are business women. And the way that they run their business and show appreciation to their clients is above and beyond what most people do on a regular basis. Client care is essential and i don't think a lot of people take that into consideration when they are looking at retaining clients and even gaining new ones and you know as a pr professional i tell people all the time there's one thing about you telling people how amazing you are but when other people can tell people how amazing you are that is the essence of public relations yes how the public views you and how they talk about you um, and their level of authenticity and how they take care of their clients, potential clients, people that refer them, friends of the community, they are community leaders. And I do want to thank them for not only welcoming me, but then allowing me to bring other people in, on this experience. So I took Tina um, last year. She had a great time. This year I was like, let me, I thought it was important to bring Gia because Tina's from the Bay, Gia's from Southern California. And I think even people here in LA don't recognize some of the hidden jewels in yes. their own community. Mm -hmm. Literally 10 minutes away from somewhere she's at on a regular basis, didn't recognize that there's a whole subculture in the South Bay of real estate professionals, um, homeowners, uh, just recreational culture that it goes un unexposed, underexposed uh, yes. to the Southern California community. So I'm glad that she enjoyed it. But more than anything, I appreciate the ladies that brought us on this tour and allowed for us to be a part of their um, community because all it does is enhance how we live and then how we think. One of the things I get from this tour is ideas on what you want your life to be, right? How you yes. want to live, what you, where you, what are your end goals? And it allows for you to see things that you wouldn't necessarily have seen before, or just envision something that wasn't necessarily on your purview. And that then gives you more ideas on what you want to do next, maybe with your own career. So we're going to have a um, designer on, uh, hopefully she gets on in a sec, but G is a designer. And I remember we were looking over one of the backyards and she was just like, just the way that they had the backyard set up. She was like, oh, me and Jeff have been thinking about doing something like this. That gives her more ideas and more dimensions to what it was she was going to do before. So allowing for yourself just to be exposed to things that you're not um, usually exposed to, getting out of your comfort zone, being around people you may not have um, otherwise, just really enhances your own life. So I'm really thankful for uh, Michelle and Jennifer for having us. I'm thankful for Gia for trusting me to not lead her down a dark path of nothingness because it was so amazing. And then Mickey Murfino was there and she's like, she was dressed as an elf, but shout out to Mickey. She's always yes. trying to um, make every occasion happier and lighter and just more invigorating. So it was dope to have her doing her thing. She made sure we got the pictures, but 
she really kept the mood light and she kept Gia's cup full. So oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I just want to say again, uh, Michelle, and it, you know, you Michelle is like the bomb. But let me tell you guys, it's funny. Tanya was telling me, you know, Tanya will always tell you who people are, you know, in when she's when she's out and about. So she was like, oh yeah, Michelle, you know, I refer everybody to Michelle, you know, if they're looking for a house or, or looking to rent, you know, in this area stuff like that. So she happens to mention that to Michelle. Oh yeah, Michelle, you know, I told Gia, you know, I'm trying to get her to when she retires and move here, you know, and I told her I knew that my go-to person and stuff. So the next thing I know, Michelle goes. Oh yeah, and you're gonna get your real estate license, and I'm like, what? Are you, we're talking about moving, you know. And so, every, so after that, every time we would say something, she'd be like, oh yeah, when Gia gets a real estate license, you know. <laughs> I was just like, but this is how these these women they they were so much fun, and they they just welcomed you, you know. It's just like wow. But like Tanya was saying, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone and get out and, and meet people, meet other people, because you never know. Uh, I try to take when I do get out, because I don't get out much when I do. I try to take something from every time, every encounter with, with people and then put myself out there. And we just happened to be having conversations. And one of the ladies, I don't remember her name, Tanya. Um, we were talking about the, uh, the, uh, the guy who was selling bracelets on the beach or something years ago and, and how he kind of blew up and stuff like that. And, um, and I had just said, you know, so she was talking about the guy's name. So I said, well, I want you to remember this name. I want you to remember the mahogany box. I said, because that story you just told, I said, that's going to be the story of my story, you know? And she goes, yeah, really? What are you talking about? So then we started talking and everything. And then she was like, oh my God. So then she told, then she says, oh no, Michelle, she's not going to serve real estate. I'm going to start be her marketer and she's going to be my assistant. <laughs> and you know, and we're going to market her. We're going to market her jewelry. <laughs> and I thought that was just so cute. Wait, but did you see how competitive Michelle is um, yes. about what she envisions for her own business? Yeah. She gave her the evil eye, like, listen, Okay, I already got plans for this woman right. and how she's going to enhance my business. Right. But look, the thing about that whole situation was for me so dynamic to watch how other women empower other women, right? Yes. It's something that we talk about, but we were actually in the midst of the kind of energy that makes that happen. Her and Michelle had been working together, she said, for 17 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. 17 years. Women that have not only a personal relationship, but a business relationship for over 17 years. Listen, we can do that on a regular basis. Yes. And if you look at a lot of the things that I write or people I give kudos to in my progress as a professional, Michelle's one of those people because, and I know some people have a hard time hearing this, but it, it's not the color that matters to her. It's the work ethic and the ability to deliver and this thing called integrity. If you pay attention to how she does business and how she treats other people, it's the integrity for me and it's the integrity for her. And when you start looking at women that empower other women, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. It's not what you look like. It's yes. not how you, where you from, where you live. It is about integrity and how we deal with each other as women and as professionals that do it for them, that keep that connection, that help them grow business together, together, yes. not you grow or I grow and you don't. There's right. no crabs in the barrel. It's we grow together. A woman that you just met now wants to partner with you to help you grow your brand. And, they, exactly. and people think that can't be a thing. So just remember that. Um, yeah. We're going to bring on our guest really quick, Miss Crystal Harris. She is a designer since we're talking about amazing designs um, in Atlanta. Uh oh, she just popped off. But I'm going to go ahead and let you know she has a line. Her uh, line has been seen on Real Housewives uh, in Atlanta. And she has... She has some incredible stuff and she has some cool stuff coming up this year. I think 2020 uh, looks like COVID kind of put some things on hold for her. But as soon as she gets on here, we're going to bring her on. But Gia, I think a lot of people don't recognize that your stuff has been seen on the red carpet, too. I want to get into that. Miss Crystal, um, are you there? Can you come through for us real quick? I think I see her. Oh, I don't uh -oh. see her anymore. Uh oh. She went black. She faded to black. <laughs> faded to black. Who had that album? Jay Z. Girl, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, Lord. Uh oh. 
Maybe she has a bad Hopefully we can get her back on, but let me um, talk to the people about your stuff. It has been seen on the red carpet, and I don't think a lot of people even know that and how that happened for you. Oh, my God. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think back, Tanya, because it's been so many years. Uh, Bro, this was like last year or two years ago. Red carpet. Who had it on? Tell me who. New York, who? LA, LA Fashion Week. Oh, the fashion, uh, you know. Oh, well, I happened to, you know, that was a, a another uh, Sisters Empowering Each Other type of kind of event. Um, I happened to uh, meet a, a designer, a swimsuit designer, and uh, we started collaborating on um, some swimsuits that... Uh, 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 we well, this year we collaborated with swimsuit, but before that she was doing some fashion shows and she asked, she liked my jewelry and she wanted, uh, to, um, have my jewelry, uh, featured with her along with her swim, along with her swimsuits, um, in LA fashion week, which we did and was amazing. That was my, um, uh, my fringe line. I did a lot of fringe. Um, I did some French anklets, uh, French necklaces, and then some of my stonework. I, I deal with a lot of, uh, I'm a beaded, uh, designer. I like beads. I do a lot of beaded jewelry. And um, I did did some, um, and I work with um, some of my precious stones. And my one of my favorite stones is agate stone. So I did a lot of uh, nice, really big um, agate necklaces, chokers, and things like that. Um, so those were uh, in featured in LA Fashion Week along with um, the models and stuff. So I did that, and also my work early on. I had I met another chance encounter. I met a nice woman. We're still friends to this day, Miss Jackie Burke. Um, she worked. She used to work for um, E uh, Entertainment, E News. And she saw my stuff and she um, she loved it. And she was like, oh, have, you know, have you ever thought about getting your stuff, you know, on TV or in, in places like that? And I was like, well, no, you know, I, yeah, it would be nice and stuff. So she turned me on to Miss Alicia Coyles, um, who's the who was the host of E! News. And Alicia wore, has worn a lot of my stuff on um, on um, TV. And um, so it was really good to get a shout out. And my name was on the um, the credits and stuff as uh as far as her wardrobe and stuff like that so alicia coils has worn my stuff and then of course you know um cheryl underwood who was our um our soror and also our past international grand ambassadors of zeta phi beta sorority she's also worn my stuff on the talk so i've been um i've been on tv i've even been in print work i work with um, um gabrielle lewis who was a stylist and now is a fashion designer early on in her styling career uh, i work with her um a lot of my jewelry were on, on people that she styled. Um, what's her name? The Kendra. She was used to Kendra be Scott. a bunny. Um, she's worn some of my stuff in some um, magazine shoots and um, um, a few other um, young actors and actresses have worn my stuff. So I, I've been um, I've been in print and I've been on, on the screen. So for people who don't know, I'm not new to this. I've been doing this for a while. And um, like Tanya said, I don't really talk about all the things I do or how great I am. I just, that's just not something I do. But um, along with, you know, being a Lieutenant of LA County Sheriff's Department, I'm also a creative and artist. Uh, my true love, I believe is, uh, is the art. Um, so when I'm not fighting crime, I'm creating fabulous stuff. Um, I love, I enjoy painting. So I do a lot of painting too on some of my stuff. I have some painted apparel and things like that. So yeah, so I, you know, I've been doing my little thing y'all. Uh, <laughs> so here's the question. For, that I have for you. Okay. And we were talking about this in my PR group, but I want to discuss this with you because we do talk often about women empowering each other. We toot each other's horn, but we have a hard time tooting our own, our own, right? Right. Part of that I have come to discover is because there's a lot of pressure with success, right? There's a mm -hmm. lot of pressure. Once you expose yourself and show your capabilities and people are starting to celebrate you, then there's that moment where you realize, okay, I have to continue. I have to continue to level up. I have to mm -hmm. continue to be progressive. I have to do better than I did last time, whatever that might be. And for some people, I think the thought of people recognizing their talents can be a little scary. So I just wanted to ask you your thoughts about that. And have you yourself ever felt that way? Like, well, I'm not either I'm not worthy or once I get acknowledged, now what the fuck do I do with it? Like, oh, my God. OK, well, I have had all of those thoughts, Tanya. And I just I was funny. I was talking to somebody, uh, my sister-in-law last night, yesterday. 
And I told her, because she was talking about, you know, she's getting ready to turn 40 and, and doing different things. And I told her, no matter what you do, you're always going to have self-doubts. And I just told her, I said, I said for me, just the other night, I was having self-doubts about the stuff that I do and, and things like that. I said, so don't, you know, that, that happens. No matter how successful you think a person is, people do have self-doubt. And it's always the fear of the unknown. With me, um, as far as the questions you pose, I, I think with me is is yeah, I fear all those things, but I, it's me. It's, it's more a personality thing. I don't. I know it's probably hard for y'all to believe, but I really, I'm not a real like people person to get out, get out there and be talking a whole lot. I'm more of a behind the scenes type person. Um, so that's part that I struggle with. I struggle, like you say, tooting my own horn, telling people how great I am. I just, I just do the, I just do work. I just create and put it out there and you know, hopefully every people love what I do and, and support what I do. But I'm also a person that even though I am a creative and I make things, I, you know, I got told somebody one day I could probably make any and everything. Um, I said, I still support other people who do the things that I do because I just like nice and things and things that people create. So I'm not one of those creators that, Oh, I make jewelry. I'm never going to buy jewelry from somebody else. Or I, you know, I design hair wraps. I'm never going to buy a hair wrap from someone else. Or I design clothes. I'm never going to buy someone else's clothes. That's not what I do. I, if you are creative and you making things that are nice, I support that. But for me, I think it's just my personality. I don't have, the, I feel that my personality is not that get out and see me, feel me. Hey y'all, that's me. That kind of stuff. That's just not me. And I'm trying to work on that because, but I don't know, I think that's just my upbringing. Um, and I say I'm an introvert with extrovert tendencies. Y'all seem to say that I'm not an introvert, but <laughs> people that sit that around me, but I am. And I think it's um, when you kind of like that, it is kind of hard to recognize or see that, oh, you know, ooh, you know, I'm great or people think I'm great. It is kind of hard to digest and own it and walk in it. So. I'm a work in progress and, and I'm trying to, you know, I'm authentic. This is me. I'm real. You know, I don't come with nothing else. Um, some days I'm feeling good. And some days I'm like, I ain't got time for y'all. And, <laughs> and, you know, don't take it personal. It's just, Hey, but, uh, but yeah. So yeah, I, I do fear that those things, Tanya, and I'm, I'm working on them. That's all I can say. I'm working on them. So when you are dealing with them though, I'm assuming, cause I do too that it has to be your tribe and the people that surround you that can continue to support you, whether it be monetarily or emotionally, uh, that kind of gets you through those yeah. doubt. Like yeah. when you're feeling that doubt that I'm not sure, even when I pull your coat chain sometimes about things like, hey, let's just do that. And you're like, I'm not that per No, you are, like you are. <laughs> What exactly helps you get past that, though, when you are in those moments of doubt? Is there anything in particular? Is there a trigger that kind of helps that or? No, I just I just have a lot of self-talk. I talk to myself in my head. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. No, yeah. And, I, and then I'll say or like you said, like, like you said, talking to your tribe. I might talk to somebody else. Somebody might call me or talk to me about something else that they're struggling with or whatever. And I'm talking to them, you're telling them how, you know, how they are. Then I, and I always tell them, I say, you know, I'm telling you this, but I'm also talking to myself at the same time. So me help, it helps me when I talk to other people who might be feeling that way, us getting together, just chatting helps. And then also I just go to my head and I say, you know, I, I too, I'm, I'm good. I'm worthy. My stuff is just as good as the next and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, that's why I think it's always important to, acknowledge people acknowledge when especially when people are the creative people because that does even though they might not show it it does make them feel good make them say okay i'm on the right track because that's what you want to hear when you pose like when i pitch ideas to you you know i'm good at pitching a lot of ideas and it's like you know when i when you say oh yeah that's good that's good oh that that makes me go back and and, and do more and do more you know but you know but when you, i pitch something somebody doesn't give me the that give me that kind of response then you kind of like oh Maybe I'm not doing something right, you know, and stuff. Yeah. And then you have to talk yourself out of that because you are, you know, everybody just has a different way of showing stuff. So, so what is your advice to other women? You give yours and I'll, I'll give mine. Okay. Or men, because Je you know, your husband is creative also. And when they're, when you notice that they're in that space of, of, um, low self-esteem or, or low uh, self-worth or just, not feeling really confident in their own ideas and abilities and how do you advise other people to help the people around them 
that are struggling with that. Because I think a lot of people, we talk about this, women supporting women. But again, I've always said, I don't think people necessarily know how. What are the steps to supporting other people around you? Even though you say it like, oh, I got your back. What does that look like? And how do you do it? And how do you tell, suggest other people do it also? Well, some, I tell people, sometimes you do have to take a break and take a step back because when you're constantly grinding, trying to do your thing, it does get overwhelming and trying to do this and do that. And you can't you can't do it all. And you do need a team. And that's what we need to work on, I think, with, with, every, with people. It's building a, a team and a tribe, people that can help, can assist you. Because you're not, you know, even though you might think you're good in every, everything, you can't do everything. Like, I'm the first one to say, I'm not good at everything. And like we was talking the other day, I'm not the techie person. So I stay in my lane. You know, I can figure some stuff out. But no, that's not my forte. So, I, you know, I need somebody on my team that can can help out and, and do that and, and is willing to do it. See, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Like you said, Tanya, but, you know, talk is cheap. Put, you know, action speaks louder than anything else. And I try to live by that way. If I say I'm going to support you, if I say I'm going to do something, I, I'm, I try to do it. You know, um, I'm always sharing stuff with other people or about other people. Hey, this, hey, that and stuff. And we need more of that. And it doesn't hurt to do that. I think if we did, if, if people see that more. You know, and don't just say I got you because what does that mean? I, I hated that. I hated that even on my job. Oh, do this. You know, oh, you got it. Well, no, I don't got it. Tell me how to do it. You know, and that's the whole thing. People need to, you know, people need to be told. And sometimes they need to be told step by step because we just assume, you know, people know stuff. Like people probably assume I know about TikTok. No, I don't know about nothing about TikTok. You know, stuff. I need, I need some step by step instructions. And it's nothing wrong with saying that, but people need to stop, slow down, and 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 take time and show people things uh let's get get it back to the yesteryears and stuff and stop thinking that uh we just we're gonna wake up tomorrow and know how to do all the stuff that we that needs to be done to grow whatever we're doing um and then like i say i tell people sometimes you have to take a step back you have to have some rest days just just shed all that off and and just you know be with yourself for a little while and then then go back at whatever you're doing because it's a it's a constant you know struggle um to be there but also too i just try to tell people just keep doing it i'm the type of person if i if i'm interested in something i just go out and do it i might not know what i'm doing and when i start but at least i try i didn't know creating the mahogany box and 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 doing the jewelry was gonna be uh, what it is i just like making stuff so i started making it and putting it out there and you know it didn't happen overnight and it's, and it's still growing it's not i'm still not where i i want it to be but i just did it I didn't say no. I'm not gonna do it. Hell, I I just do. That's why I tell, I tell people if you're interested in something, you like something, just do it. I'm always saying do it. You know, I know Jeff. He's uh, he probably gets on. He probably gets mad at me because I'm like, he, you know, he's he's a he's an awesome chef. He's awesome in, in a whole lot of areas and stuff. And it's like Jeff, if I if I enjoy cooking like you enjoy cooking, and people was asking for stuff that I cook, I okay yeah it's gonna be x amount of dollars you know stuff you know you know how back used to go to the hair salon and they would come in and on the weekend with Probably the little basket of cakes and stuff like that and they were selling cakes they were selling pies they were selling dinners and stuff like that see <laughs> that's but COVID. <laughs> look but yeah. COVID. right yeah but i'm saying you know but i think people you know stop we should stop get out get out of our own way and stop thinking about if it doesn't succeed if it doesn't work stop thinking that we need to be more positive and say it's going to work when it does work. And I mean, yes, I'm going to sell, you know, 500 bracelets. I'm going to sell, you know, whatever. Um, and, and just, just keep being like that think thinking like that. And that, that does help, but that's my advice to people, you know, just, you know, just do it as, as what is, does that Nike just do it? Yeah. You know, Hey, so for do people it. like, especially now, and I wanted to have this conversation because the holidays are coming up because small businesses are, I won't necessarily say they're all struggling, but some of them are. And even mm -hmm. if they're not, helping them grow uh, is should be our priority because small businesses is the centerpiece of our economy. So when you do have people that you know are working their business, they're grinding, they're really trying to um, make it happen and make a difference in other people's lives, find a way to support them. So for instance, um, I see Tanae was on here one of our sorority sisters, she is an interior design business. Um, she does her own thing. And uh, I think she's with a company, but her, you know, I, I'm not getting a house done right now. But if I know someone that is, 
I'm going to refer her. If I have the opportunity to slide by her um, Instagram or Facebook, I'm going to like the post. I'm going to share it with other people that I think it could benefit. There's so many different ways that you can help support small businesses and community organizations right now. Just because it might not be a direct benefit to you does right. not mean that you can't help them. Remember, public relations isn't them telling other people how amazing they are. It's us. It's the public telling other people how amazing they are to grow their brand awareness. So take the time over this holiday season, even if you're not going to spend money with an organization, to find a way to support them, to find a way to you know, bring them into a conversation that maybe they would not have been before to find a way to introduce business owners to someone that could possibly benefit them later on. You might know someone that's thinking about buying a house in two years, making that introduction gets that relationship right. started and has the ability to do so much for a business. Holding back really doesn't benefit anybody, including yourself. So right. show your ability to be useful instead of useless. That's my thoughts. Be useful and not useless, make introductions, show people how you can support other people, even if you don't um, directly benefit from them. So right. that's just my little take on the holidays, small businesses, and how we can all support small businesses and how women can support each other. Yep. Women empowering women, sisters empowering yep. let, each other. That's my thing is, let's, let's grow our table and have seats at the table for people, for others. That's it. That's what it is. Um, yeah. One of the reasons I, one of our viewers always ask myself, am I the weapon formed against myself so I don't prosper? Absolutely. We do that all the yes. time. We must get out of our own way and surround yourself with people that when you are in your way, they will tell you, yes, Move. go do this. Stop being resistant to success. I think we yeah. find ourselves in a situation where we are resistant to success for fear of failure yeah. after the success. Y'all really go out and get y'all what that looks like. Y'all go out and get y'all Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you might wind up drunk on a Saturday on a bus. It, that'd be a good thing. But see, you'll be doing things that you uh, you said no to or you never thought thought about doing. You know. So hey, get y'all yes. Tanya. I try, but you know, like I said. Surround yourself with people that will not allow for you to dim your light. Okay. It matters who you surround yourself with. Some people are like, no, I'm just going to keep all of my old friends. We going to no new friends. Listen, if your old friends ain't doing what you need new friends to do, get you some new friends. Okay. Mm, girl, say that again. Say it again. New friends. It's important, not just now, but as you continue to grow and matriculate through your business and through life. And if you have kids, they need to see that too. Like, I think it's important, especially for me and Ray, that our children see that the people we surround ourselves with are people that motivate us to be better in some kind of way. We're not yes. all doing the same thing. I'm not in law enforcement, but I am motivated by someone that is. So really look at your circle and be someone that's useful in your circle. Don't be useless. All right. So what else is going on with you before we get out of here today, Miss Gia? Um, oh, next weekend, I'm going to be at the Nothing But Black Flea, um, Ball Hills Crenshaw Mall. I'll be there next Saturday and um, or this summer, coming up Saturday and then the following Saturday before Christmas. Um, I'll be doing those two things. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working on something um, that's going to be um, dropping pretty soon. Was well, two things, but... Um, Something's gonna drop um, really soon because um, y'all know, you know. Look out! I'll just tell you something's gonna be dropping on my birthday, and my birthday is coming up. If y'all don't know, my birthday is January. Y'all listening? January first, first, not December thirty first. January first, it's my birthday. That's New Year's Day. See, I bring in the year with everybody. See, that's maybe that's why I'm so special. See, I bring it in with y'all. You, you know, so um. So no, I'm gonna be dropping something. Something's gonna be dropping um, January the first. Um, so look out for that. And um, that's it. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna be doing my thing, um, creating and you know, you know, hanging out. You know, Got doing it. My thing, drinking coffee, drinking you know champagne, and you know, um, looking forward to 2022. 
um because for me 2022 is going to be the year of the year to execute hey. i'll just say that it's going to be the year to execute so um i'm looking forward to that i'm looking forward to uh more of our podcast uh growing our podcast i'm looking forward to um being able to share other people's dreams and things uh stuff on our podcast so you guys if you got something and you want to advertise we are open to advertise your product your services whatever you got get with tanya again see i've been in my lane get with tanya don't contact me because that's not my thing you get with tanya you contact me if you want some stuff some merchandise you know some merchandise for your business some printing work those are the kind of things you contact me for you want some custom made jewelry that's you contact me to get on the podcast and for advertising you contact tanya that cute little lady right there contact her uh. so listen she's out of control but i will say we are working on something big for her birthday I also have a pretty dope drop um 2022 also yeah uh, new books coming up i will have some ladies that are going to be a part of that so stay tuned just stay connected there's so much good stuff going on if you miss the pod you miss out so stay connected we always got good stuff coming up for you and you know what next week we actually have a pretty dope guest from redondo beach pd um a lady I don't even think we I don't think we've had a lady yet. No, we haven't. We'll, we'll have two officers, uh, two female officers. All right. That's week. right. And, That's uh, right. It should Bring be fun. Bring them so, on. Following the whole track of women empowering each other, yes. we're definitely gonna have a nice, organic, hot conversation um to kick off. Oh, that's gonna be good. Day. Y'all need to y'all need to tune in next week because we got yeah. you're gonna have three women in law enforcement on the podcast, and we're probably gonna be cutting up. Uh, and I hope we're gonna be dishing, um, awesome dishing family. everything. You know, yeah. all things women Might and all male bashing. No, I'm just yeah, saying, we we are, you know, and we don't do that. But no, well, I'm sure we're gonna be talking about you know our, our careers, careers in law enforcement, and what our careers have been like. And um, I don't know because I don't know who they are. You guys, um, Tanya knows, but they're probably young on the department. Where as far as years, on um, the old. Okay, so um, because uh, I'm, It'll the, be I'm fun. My, huh? It'll be fun. Yeah, so you know, so you'll get to you'll get to see here from from women, you know, in law enforcement, you hear it from our own mouths and stuff like that, and you you know, hey, you might learn something, something you might begin to like law enforcement again. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> so you guys tune in. Make sure you stay connected. My morning coffee or my morning coffee drip on Instagram. Um, subscribe to the pod, and we will see you next week.